Welcome everyone. Thank you for being here. I know, a long, I know it's a long journey walking from the venue until you here, so thank you so much for starting that. Before we start the presentation, I would love to do like some check. We here have a cluster, a single cluster running at least with 50 nodes, <coughs> 100 nodes, 1,000 nodes, some brave people here. <laughs> So today we're going to talk about Kubernetes at scale, or actually better say, we're going to talk problems when you scale, and some tricks that you can use to enhance CNI and kubelets. I am Bruno Silva, Senior Solutions Engineer at Sysdig, and I help customers on secure and compliance their workloads in Kubernetes and the cloud, and together with me. My name is Henrique Santana. Thank you for joining on our session. Uh, I work for AWS. I support EKS and ECS customers. Um, for in English speaker, uh, you can call me Rick, it's fine. Thank you for joining. So, a disclaimer, uh, the timeline that we're gonna present not necessarily represent the real thing, how things happen. We did a little bit of shuffle to get a better flow, and maybe not the same multiverse that we are here, so just be aware of that. And of course, we talk about community, safe, no cluster war harm during the make of this presentation. Yeah, just for context, uh, we had a, we were working for a company that had a project that basically was to like save money, had a cost optimization project. And for this project, of course, this affects our team and we need to uh, provide some solutions to achieve the goal that they are looking for. And one of the solutions that we're thinking usually or likely that you are already using this is basically turning off and turning on your environment uh, for the weekend, weekends, if you don't have workload that receive traffic or are uh, attending customers on weekend time. So it's very common approach to reduce costs on the cloud. So basically the, the goal is to like from between Friday and Saturday, turn off all the nodes or maximum of the nodes that you have and at morning time before the first request arrive, you start everything again to receive the, be able to receive the traffic from your customers. So for this, we had just, again, to explain about the scale that we are talking about here. For the test environment, we had uh, like 100, 200 nodes. But for production, we're talking about 1,000, 1,200 nodes. So for this, we need to like do some maths because we could not test it in, in production. We need to do it in, in test environment, make sure that it's working fine. And after that, okay, let's do some maths to make sure that we are achieving the goal that the company was looking for. So basically we did this test, we made the, the, all the process to, to do this. It's not so, so, it's so hard to do this. So basically we did this for the test environment. Uh, everything works as expected. And since the, the goal, the, the financial goal was achieved, we decided to deploy this in, uh, in production. It was of course, since you <laughs> need to downscale at, uh, on Saturday and then scale again on Monday, uh, we need to do this on Friday. So it's, uh, yeah, we, we, we delivered that and deployed that on Friday. And of course, Monday morning, oh, um, Mm. Uh, yeah, clearly <laughs> something went wrong. And the pressure is like building up, as you can see, and probably you faced this before, calling Slack messages, like you start to like, everyone was, oh, I need to go back, etc. blah, blah. And then the thing is, okay, we need to troubleshoot, of course, and fix it. But when you are in pressure, sometimes it's very hard to like, okay, let's breathe, let's just all do it. Uh, and the behavior is very weird. Like some pods were crashing loopback, okay. Some pods were stuck in creating, so it was different behavior. And I guess everyone here knows when networking is failing, it's usually not this time, it was not core DNS. <laughs> Sorry, I need to be close here, I don't know why. Core DNS gods. Uh, the message to you, I mean, the error was about like networking service, so, but was not directly, you know, resolving name issues or 
And the behavior was like some apps able to don't talk to each other, and then we're like, okay, we need to put this back online. It's a lot of pressure, and we're not proud, but we use something that usually known as Windows solution. You know, turn off and turn on again. <laughs> you cannot turn off a <laughs> Kubernetes cluster, you know, in general, but you can kill pods or delete them. Uh, the problem is sometimes in the pod is stuck, you need some use special flags. You maybe heard about like, don't respect the graceful, graceful period, so you force because the pod was stuck, even Kubelet tries to do the work and doesn't work. So, I mean, not pretty, but make production go back online was, you know, the first thing, and then, yeah, thank you. <laughs> it was fixed, right? So clearly, why? Um, I mean, we tested this before, we did a lot of checks. So doing about some troubleshooting sessions, the first thing, of course, go back to the drawing board and like, what's the difference between dev and prod, right? So it's usually the first step. And as kind of Enrique mentioned, the big difference was the size. And like really in the check, we only got this, like okay, the size, like the magnitude is way bigger. So this for sure was influencing uh, the problem that we had. Scavenging the logs, we found this message here, network at common failed to assign a P address to container. So in Kubernetes, in Kubeland, in Kube world, the responsible to give IP address to pods or to containers is the CNI, Container Network Interface, also known. Yeah, for this case, we are using Amazon EKS. So for Amazon EKS, you can use whatever you want for the CNI, but in this case, we are using AWS VPC CNI. This means that we had a strong integration, integration, integration with the cloud and um, Basically, the VPC CNI uh, need to call some APIs, such as the attach CNI, assign IP address, and so on. This is because uh, it's using or assigning IP from inside of your subnet, inside of your VPC. So think about that. So we are thinking, we are searching our cluster at the same time, all the nodes at the same time together. So, and we are failing to, to uh, have this uh, networking connection between the pods. And since you are using AWS VPC CNI, that is a cloud integration or a strong integration with the cloud APIs, we start to check the cloud trail, which means that we are checking the logs from the cloud provider to make sure that, okay, what's going on on their, their side? And we discover that we are being throttled, basically. So this means that the amount of APIs that we are trying to do at the same time, or on a short period of time, was not like they were throttling and uh, we were unable to assign IP address for the, that pods and some of the pods were assigned IP address and working the other nodes. It, it was like a, a weird behavior for the, the applications, from the application side. So for this, to solve this, we need to open a case with the, the support team, the cloud support team. They were able to, okay, indeed you reach the, the limit and we basically explain the use case and they, okay, let's increase this limit. Another thing that we checked, since it was a managed service, we need to, okay, what about the control plane? Can you check the control plane as well? And the control plane was clear at the time, so no, no issue with the control plane. And one thing that they provided was very useful, it was a dashboard that we can create to basically proactively know about any throttling issue that we are, because like for this issue, without checking the cloud trail, we didn't, we were, were unable to realize that was throttling, right? With this dashboard uh, created, we could like check and okay, we are hitting the limits and this is uh, the reason because of our application is not uh, being able to communicate. So we create this dashboard to make sure that, okay, uh, we need to deploy the solution again and we need to have this dashboard ready. So basically on the next, and of course, after this uh, limit increase, uh, the dashboard setup and everything, I think it's, it's okay, it's fixed, right? So uh, we don't, we likely not, we will not hit any limits anymore for the, the these APIs because we increase the limits very much. So for the next Monday, we were basically checking the, like 30 minutes before the time that we scheduled to, to start up the, the 
working nodes again. We were in front of the dashboard and everything was good. So, but at the moment that we start again, like 15 minutes more or less, we start to receive the same message saying, you know, it's not working uh, again. And like the company was like very crazy about that. So again, we need a solution. Let's take over <laughs> this as fast as we can. But this time we don't, we cannot fail anymore. So we need to go real deep to find what's causing this. So for the first time, we didn't see any logs other than that, that one that I showed you. But right now, it's still the issue. So why? Let, let, let's, let's do a holistic approach for this while troubleshoot. For this, the first step that we did was to use the EKS log collector. It's a very handy tool. It's not only for EKS. You can use for your cluster, any cloud provider, even on-premise. You can collect the logs, check everything that the, you have on your uh, configuration or any logs that you, the kubelet sending, anyth anything. Is, has a folder hierarchy also that you can check the files, open a VS code, do a grab or something like that. It's very handy. So you, you, we use this um, tool to collect all the logs from the work node that was having the pods that were not being able to com communicate. And from this, we start to think about two approaches. Like one thing was to clean up all the mess that we had on this configuration, if you had any mess. And after that, we need to, okay, let's think, of, let's one step ahead and we start to improve the, the configuration that we have, follow the best practice and so on. So talking about the cleaning part, one thing that we noticed from the user data was that we are using the Docker Z uh, REST class command, but we are using EKS and for a while, the EKS is already using the container ID. So this command was a legacy, obviously a legacy code that was not to be supposed to be there. It should affect the issue that we had, likely not, but it's you. We were following a holistic approach and clean up everything that should not be there. And anyway, we removed this from our configuration. Another thing that we also spot was uh, IP tables uh, flush command, which basically was clean up everything at the startup of the, the node. For the kube prox is the one that also set up some uh, rules for IP tables. So for this, we cannot make sure of that, but likely from the size that we have, like at scale that we have, maybe there is a race condition about this common that are flushing the rules and the kube prox that are setting up the rules at the same time. So this could cause the issue. We could not correlate this directly, but still this common should not be there. We did the cleanup of it. Right now, Bruno will move forward with the part that is to improve and also fix some advanced errors that we, we had, like errors that we spot on. So continuing the troubleshooting, you know, uh, if there's any maintainer of Kubelet here, thank you so much. Please look this message. It's clear, error pull, image pull. Pull KPS succeeded. Yeah, I don't know what KPS mean that time, but I mean, if every developer do this kind of thing for us, we all know that our life is gonna be way easier. So if you don't know something and a mesh error, what usually you do? Yeah, you Google about, right? Or you chat GPT or Amazon Q, whatever the tool that you can do it. And then for this case, it's basically a configuration, the kubelets, that how many image you can download at the same time. And this is set to be five image per second, which I would say most of the time, and before I hit this, I didn't know about that and I never needed. it. So this is something you know that we realized and we changed this parameter. Another change is that we like, okay, we had the problems, we're tracking logs to try to know, but if you can go one step ahead, and especially for EKS, there's something called EKS best practices, which are AWS friends, they get this kind of issues with some customer and then they update this to help all the others. And one of the things we realized also in the product cluster, there was a lot of cron jobs. And cron jobs is like their burst mode. So they start, every pod in the cron job will get an IP, and then again, that you know, so a lot of networking and, and, and problems. Especially there is one set on the EKS or AWS VPC and I better say, it's called IP cooldown periods. I guess the name speaks in itself. The default is around 30 seconds, so we make the change. So this like, I use the IP, it's done, I release, flush, whatever you can use. 
And remember, in Kubernetes, we don't care about IP. If the Bruno pod and the Hick pod use the same IP, they're not connected at the same time. I don't care, so it's just good for everyone. Also on AWS, when EC2 instance gets the IP, the ENI, to, to get there, it's also the time to do this attachment. So if I need more IPs, I need more, sometimes I hit the number max of IPs of the ENI, I need another ENI. So there's another configuration called warm ENI target, which basically you go to the OS and say, trust me, I'm the sysadmin, get all this ENI, get all this IP, you're gonna need it. I, I'm the owner here, just do what I'm saying to do which helps a lot, you know. Just the time to get warm up your eyes sometimes can take like three to six seconds. So again, imagine times 1,000 nodes, one, two percent increasing helps a lot. Another thing, uh, we spot in some uh, nodes this error, um, I mean, a little bit generic, but unable to reach API servers, still networking related. Uh, just for context, if you are inside the cluster and you need to talk to Kube API, you use a service cluster IP called Kubernetes in the default namespace. In the case for EKS, the endpoints are actually the ENIs of AWS account in your, so there's no peering, no VPC, it's just magic. And there's an also a suggestion for the EKS best practice again that you can set the cluster name as a cluster endpoint variable for the AWS CNI. So instead of trying, if you have an EKS cluster, you know the cluster name is like a lot of giant string with random numbers and names and region, blah, blah, blah. So to do that is internet, endpoints. So again, seconds, but in scale, some nodes were being affected. If you set the cluster name, you bypass all of this. So QProxy and CNI, when they start, oh, okay, I know the route where to go. So it's way easier and way more effective. Another Monday, not this time. So finally, we're like, oh, okay, oof, oh, thank you. We still have our jobs. <laughs> and so. so the lessons, the takeaway, I think it's very important for these sessions is number one, default values are okay until they are not. And I mean, yes, I never need, need some changes until something happened and well, you can be very nerdy and go to documentation and check every parameter, what is the default and what they do, but probably you're gonna die before you finish the Kubernetes documentation. The second one, don't assume there's only one error. I mean, I would say here that we kind of like, oh yeah, we got it, you know, it's the, it's the cloud responsibility, it's the API, it's not, it was not us, and we're like, okay, we did, we, we're done, we're done. So even though some errors only show up after, I think we should like reveal, like get the logs, get ready, try, you know, we could maybe be one step ahead and avoid another bad Monday. Be aware of your surroundings and not the person that sits like beside you, in front of you here. If I'm running a cluster in a cloud provider that around, it's cloud APIs, even out, using another scenario, for example, like ceiling or whatever, you still have like limits of number of nodes, maybe the region doesn't have enough capacity, so if you're running on-prime, it's the same, it's limited, maybe you need to talk to a team, the switch can, so remember, we talk about Kubernetes, but this runs on OS, this runs like an infra, and this can also be impacting uh, your infrastructure or your EKS. There's always legacy code somewhere. If you didn't find yet, maybe you create it. So, you know, this, as soon as you find, Sometimes it could be like a big problem. Sometimes as we saw, it was there. Maybe previous person, they started the company, there was a reason, so maybe. And the last one, I think it's really, really handy. You cannot predict everything. I remember uh, KubeCon Valencia, I was in a talk, then someone explained that we did lots of tests and blah, 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 and still something went wrong in production. Because you can do physically possible, you know, the test that you know, but you can, try to predict it's gonna happen, but production, there's also this magic, the production always have something that you don't know, is not mapped, etc. And I think there's two ways that you can, you know, try to be ahead on this. First, like you are here, so you hear your sad story, and then maybe if it's happening to you again, you go like, oh yeah, I heard about this before. Or the second one, you can have your job made, like, you know, if the two Mondays off, so you can choose wisely the option. 
We have some useful links. Uh, this QR code goes to the CNSF page. So there's the PDF. You don't need to guess what the links are behind this. Uh, I would like to mention again about the cast logs collector because it's handy if you run it before you have a problem. Because then you are aware like, oh, how the, the folders are structured, what can I found there? And when things are down, you may not have time enough to like do properly. So a suggestion, just take a look. And then thank you so much for being here. I hope you don't get the situation after that. Uh, but if it happens, I mean, we are here. I think this is the community idea. We share very nice things, uh, learnings, etc. And you can also learn from bad things. So thank you so much. <laughs>